Viewer discretion is advised. Well, 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 well. On today's episode, pro wrestling news, rumors, spoilers, discussions, and predictions. And your hosts, Dark Cores and Dragon Rhymes. Welcome back to Talking Shit. I'm Dark Cords, that's Thump Dupree, that's Draven Grimes. We're here like we are every Wednesday, or every Thursday, I guess, this show comes out. Just talking shit. We're just talking shit. Gentlemen, how we doing today? Well, you know, uh, up and breathing. That, that's the extent of my morning so far. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, it's, it's, it's a little it's a, it's a little early to tell. <laughs> things didn't things didn't start out great, but we'll see what we'll see where they go. Yep. Right. Come on. Sounds good. Draven, what you got for us today? Oh, I figure we'd shoot the shit over this past weekend and what everybody's been doing. I know Thump did the uh the Waldo show and we did the uh the Palaka show and then uh, uh, I do want to cover. I guess we can go into it first thing. I want to go ahead and cover that that fucking vile ass shooting that was in Louisville yesterday. Anybody hear about that? No, no. Actually, well, I heard. No. I heard. I, I read the thing on the bottom of the you know the little ticker thing or whatever, but I yeah. didn't see any details on it. But, hmm. but no. yeah, so it's it's similar to what happened in fucking Nashville with that that fucking cunt that shot up the fucking school mm-hmm. but at this point it was a bank and former employees uh, I've been seeing five dead nine injured um, including an ex-girlfriend uh, a close friend to the governor of Kentucky and a former boss so wow. what the fuck is wrong with goddamn people these days why can't we just have a fucking conversation about fucking being disgruntled and let, why let, let me guess let me guess the reaction is, well, it wouldn't have happened if there was more guys with guns in there. Like, no, no. no the reaction is, the reaction is, prayers. We should do something about this. Crickets. Crickets. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. On to the next one. On to the one that's going to happen tomorrow or Friday or Saturday or whatever. You know, it's, it's you're right, funny. man. It's funny, the past two weeks we've had a, a podcast for talking shit. There's always been a fucking gun situation the day before we shoot. Yep. It's fucking ridiculous, man. This whole... Look, I believe in the second minute, but for fuck's sake, let's have some fucking reasonable controls over this shit. Alright? I'm sick and tired of hearing, oh, our thoughts and prayers are with those... the victims yeah. of this shooting... Um, but this is not the time to talk about gun control when we're so enraged about this shooting. Well, next week we'll be enraged about another shooting. And next week about another fucking shooting. Alright, Let, let's just admit... Can we just have some some balls for them to admit? They don't give a fuck about kids being killed. They don't give a fuck. I'm sorry. That That's... There's no other excuse for this shit. There's no excuse for saying, oh, our thoughts and prayers, but we're not going to fucking do anything about it. Just say you don't give a fuck that kids are dead. Just say that. All right? Because that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Fuck that's you scenario. and your Second Amendment argument. You just don't care. You'd rather have your your gun lobby money than care about kids dying. Because there's no fucking money... In preventing kids dying. Yeah. Right. Fuck all of you people with this fucking bullshit. You don't care that kids die. Period. Yeah. I think a lot of it too, brother, is... Nobody wants to get into the ugly part of the debate of what it's going to take to fix this. Yeah. Um, you know, nobody wants to have the conversation because, you know there's so many variables to it like you and i if you and i could you and i could debate this me coming from the republican perspective you coming from the democrat perspective mm-hmm. at the end of the day we want the same thing we want the shit to stop i mean 
you know, unless you're a fucking, unless you're a weirdo that goes up and shoots up schools, you want right. shit, you want the shit to stop. The problem is, is that, you know, the only way to win the argument is to come up with a mutual solution. And the only way to have the argument is to have a bunch of solutions. The problem is, nobody's, nobody, I don't think anybody has the ultimate be all into all this shit's going to stop solution. Mm-hmm. Unless you ban, unless you ban, you know, fire, and even then, even then, you know, they they've always said if you ban, if you if you uh, make, if you criminalize gun ownership, then only criminals have guns. So there is that argument, and and it's valid. It's a valid argument, you know. Um, now, granted, maybe maybe some fourteen year old kid's not going to be the guy that goes into school and shoots it up. But, you know, the statistics are proven that, that adults are more than willing to go in and try to kill our kids. So, um, if you're in, look, man, if you're an adult and you have it in your mind that you want to murder somebody or, mur- or, or do some shit like this, it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. The only way that I could see to protect our kids at school is to have a, a bigger police presence. And then it comes down to who's going to pay for it, you know, um, or do we have armed security and what's the quality going to be in that? And is that going to make a difference? You know, there's mm-hmm. no way that there's no way that we can streamline or we can know which schools are more likely to get shot up by a weirdo. You know, there's no, there's no pattern. There's no, you know, it's just, there's just so many things to debate and so many arguments. And so nobody really wants to do it. And once, once the, the last shooting is like, like we've said, last shooting stretched out of our mind. Let's move on to the new one. And, but the stats keep adding up and adding up and adding up and adding up. And now, the number one way to die if you're a child under 14 in this country is being shot. Yep. And what what's even more perverse is we're the only country in the fucking world that can that can make that statement. Mexico is not far behind. But Mexico, uh, Mexico has other. They have diseases and shit that that oh, sure. that uh, the top, you know, the top shooting. But in this country, the land of the free, home of the brave, the most supposedly the most civilized country in the world, which I'm sure that's pretty debatable. Yeah, we can question um, them. Yeah, uh, our kids die. Number one cause, shot. How fucked up is that? Our cops aren't even the number one cops in the world to get shot. That's, I believe, Mexico. Well, cops I mean, anything goes cops. in Mexico if you have some grease money. And that's right, the right. problem. But, but you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it's more, da- it's it's less dangerous to be a cop, statistically, than it is to be a kid in this country. Yeah. And you notice all the other civilized countries don't have this problem. You know, they have yeah. real gun control laws. You don't hear about a school shooting in, in England. Yeah. You don't hear about a school shooting in France and Germany. Right. It's just here. Yeah. So don't tell me that nothing can be done about it. Because things are done about it everywhere. Except here. But like I said, nobody wants to do. Nobody wants to figure. It. It's it's there's there's a mental health there's a mental health side of it. There's a there's a red you know red flag side of it, and then and then it comes right down to the guns, because who's to say some asshole's not going to go into school, and fucking you know, with some kind of um, homemade bomb and blow them up. You know, it may mm-hmm. not be, you know it, it's it's hard to say, brother. You know, or they, or going to start stabbing the shit out of them with a fucking ninja sword. You know who's who's to say? I mean, it's less likely, but it's certainly possible. And so we need we've got to we do have to address the mental health the mental health side of it. And I think, look, if Mrs. Clark, my mother, calls and says, uh, "I have one particular brother, for example, that he's fucking flipped his shit. He shouldn't own guns. Somebody should come to the fucking house." You know what I'm saying, and and make a visit, 
And if the guy, in in this case, my one particular brother, you could talk to him for five minutes. No, he's a fucking half a retard. And doesn't have any reason to have a fucking gun. But yeah, he's got ARs, fucking nine millimeters, you know. And is you know I, that does not mean that I think he's a candidate for going out and killing people. But he's definitely a candidate for a motherfucker that shouldn't own a gun. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And there needs to be more candidates of motherfuckers that shouldn't own a gun. And now, and that's a start. That's a start. But at least it's something. It's more than what the fuck they've been doing, brother. It's sure. a start, but the problem is with gun laws like Florida now, there's no such thing as someone who shouldn't have a gun. Nope. Unless you're a convicted felon, they don't give a fuck if you're crazy. They don't give a fuck what kind of anger you have, what kind of mental health you have. As long as you don't have a felony, walk around with a gun on your waist. Yep. Yeah, it's gonna be like the it's gonna be like the Wild West. The problem, the difference between the Wild West and now population 100%. you know and, it, and and there's going to be look man when everybody starts walking around with one on their hip there's going to be a very high percentage of those people that have no business having one on their hip because they weren't trained right very true very true that said how many times is a guy going to fucking or how many dead how many how many kids or kids or women or children or people or dogs or male men are we going to have to account for it dead before we realize, hey, if we're going to let these motherfuckers carry these guns, we got to teach them how to do it. But that's not going to happen because in, unless they can figure out a way to monetize it Which on they a will. federal level, they will. But by the time they get around to it, the damage will be done and it'll be like, get rid of the other gun. Get rid of the gun. Yeah. You know, we can't, we, can't even get, we can't even get people to stop to stop and, and, and explain why we need to sit, why, why Bob Jones needs a six sour to go hunt deer. Nobody can fucking explain that. Why does Bob need an AR-15 to go hunt deer? Why does he need it? Why does he need a fully automatic AK-47, which is supposed to be illegal? But ah, well, we overlook it because it's Bob. Mm -hmm. You know. Or if he gets caught with it, he pays a fine. Mm. Doesn't they don't they don't confiscate it? Pays a fine. Mm -hmm. That's Texas. That's Texas all day. Pay a fine. Nobody goes to jail in Texas for that. Mm -hmm. I don't know about Florida. I don't even know about Florida. I'm not sure. I don't. Yeah. I know. I know that when I was doing, when I was um, working in the bond, the bail bond working for the bail bond company years ago, we used to see AK 47s on the street everywhere, everywhere. It wasn't. It wasn't like an anomaly. It was a fucking regular occurrence in a pop gun. Jesus Christ! Hmm. We used to call it. We used to call it AK a pop gun because that you saw them everywhere you went. Everywhere you went. Fucking disgusting. Take you take down you take down a uh, you know a, a, a subject with a fucking um, sixteen year old kid in his house. That motherfucker. That sixteen year old kid is the first one out the door of that AK. First one out the door. Crazy man. There's no the assault rifle problem. The assault rifle problem to me is almost a totally separate issue. Let's just get motherfuckers to stop shooting our kids, mm -hmm. you know, because because they're using whatever they can get their hands on, and inevitably, that's what scares me, bro. Are we going to graduate from that to to fucking grenades and bombs and homemade shit, you know, to go kill our kids? Because that's even more cowardly. Yeah. You know. Um, I mean, it's getting to that point. As a matter of fact, I was scrolling through some social media about about a week and a half, two weeks ago, and I was just coming across random videos, kind of like uh, the shorts. And there was a woman up in, like, North Alabama where this bitch had her fucking six-year-old kid was going through Walmart, getting the shit to make a fucking nail bomb, and was putting the nail bomb together with her fucking kid right there in fucking Walmart and ready to set the shit off. She was building it in Walmart. Yeah, yeah. Walmart in the fucking buggy, like she was, was walking around the fucking store. With that was the like that was like not far from you in Georgia, right? Did that happen in no. Georgia? No, no, it was North Alabama. Well, this the one I oh, saw. Alabama, okay, all right. Yeah, I, I saw something about that. Yeah, there was some there was some crazy broad talking about she was, but she told everybody she was going to do it. 
<laughs> she was telling people in the store she was going to do it. Yeah, That's how she, she got caught. As she's putting yeah. it together. Yeah, that's nuts, man. That's what. Holy shit. Yeah. This, this is going to be my last word about this for today. But if you're one of these guys who say, "Oh, our thoughts and prayers," but you're not ready, ready to, you're not willing to make hard decisions on protecting our kids, you're a fucking pussy. Yeah. A bitch ass pussy. Yep. Yeah. And fuck you. Well, especially if you're in a fucking position to where like what could be more important like what issues do we have in this country you know people are like oh gas prices and food and fucking the economy no man no 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 no. that shit's always been controversial and it's always been a problem you know it's never nobody ever goes you know what gas is really cheap you know, nobody, nobody, <laughs> gonna, nobody does that nobody go, nobody goes you know i went to the store the other day and milk was exceptionally cheap you know i, I thought i thought about buying it in bulk nobody does that shit you know, um, so so that's something that's a constant in our. But man, how do you, how the fuck, when you turn on the news almost every day, and it does happen every day, we just probably don't hear about it, you know, all the time. Um, there's a shooting involving a child dying somewhere, and and fuck, man, almost in Orlando every day. You know, uh, it'll be some fucking 19, 18, 17, 16, you know, they're kids, fucking kids. You know, dying. Now, granted, a lot of it is street crime and shit like that, but the fucking what? Yeah. It's got to, you know, we've never addressed that. You know, we've never addressed why a 19-year-old kid's running around the street with a fucking $600 40 cal, but he doesn't have a car, he doesn't go to school, doesn't have a job, you know, sells crack. You know, we don't, we don't, address, we don't address all that. You know, a lot of our problems are the, the root problem is we're just fucking lazy when it comes to, to helping, to teaching our people, teaching people right, man. We're fucking lazy. You know? And I can even say, even like, even even when you compare it to something as completely immaterial as professional wrestling, the way, the way it used to be, the way people used to be taught and the way people used to be educated is nothing like the way they're taught and educated now. And the proof is in the pudding. I agree. I 100% agree with that. The proof is in the fucking pudding, man. And we'll go. We'll 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 talk about about wrestling protocol and all that other shit some other time. But it's, it's I wouldn't even dare to even try to even make it seem like it, like it, it's even comparable to the conversation that we're having because mm-hmm. that's ludicrous. But 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 I mean, at the end of the day, when you start thinking about what, when did we stop wanting to teach each other shit? When did we stop? When did we stop wanting to show? somebody the right way to do things or you know um or somebody to have to, to, for for the love of god to think the right thing or you know um and i know that sounds like uh, controlling and you know but man right thinking is a thing man mm-hmm. right thinking I mean, is a thing i mean just just go back fucking 25 years ago the way parents taught their children then compared to now I mean, granted, my parents didn't raise me. I had my great grandparents raise me, so I was raised with that fucking mentality yeah. that they were up with. So I was already raised in a different kind of way. But even you know, my best friend two doors down had their, his parents fucking teach him a certain way that I wasn't taught, and we were able to fucking you know come together and try to figure shit out together. These days, it's all this fucking phone. Phones, man. Phones are raising our kids. It's, it's fucking Google. It's YouTube. It's fucking TikTok. You only even start on fucking TikTok. Fucking hate TikTok. Let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something. When I I ride, I I'm in you know I'm in the crazy bastards factor. One of the members of the crazy bastards is 22 years old. Yeah. And I'm not gonna say his name right now, little fucker, because I know he'll hear this and he'll get pissed. But he could, <laughs> he could he couldn't wipe his ass without Google Maps. You see, it's such a fucking shame. <laughs> but if you, you live know. here, you fucking live in Orlando. I mean, when, when the same motherfucker asks me three or four times that lives in Orlando, my address so he can put it in his map to get here, it's like, bro, after twice you don't know how to get here? Like, how do you fucking survive? Like, seriously. Like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And they all, they have that, they get that smirk on their face. What are you going to do when they, when there's no internet? 
when the fucking missiles are headed this way and the internet is done, what are you gonna do? Where are you gonna go? How are you gonna find a shelter? Oh, I'll find a Google Maps. No, the fuck you won't. Mm-mm. No, the fuck you won't. Remember when the shit, when the shit hits the fan and the internet's gone, motherfuckers are gonna be. They're they're gonna keep. We're gonna all die because they're gonna be riding around in circles, fucking up shit. You know, and it's and and I try. You know, I don't mean to be a dick about it. Well, yeah, I kind of do. Like, Christian, you can suck my dick. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's fucked. It's fucking retarded. <laughs> it's fucking retarded, man. Like seriously, like he gets mad at me because we. I'm like we got. Saturday, for example, we're meeting strange at 27 and, uh, and fucking the U.S. 27 and 50, and there's a Walmart somewhere around there, right? Right. So I, I take him, he's like, do you know the address of the Walmart? And I'm like, no. Just fucking drive. You know, I-4, Turnpike, West or West, uh, Oak, West, uh, West 50 exit, get off, we'll find a motherfucker. It's at 50 and 27. So we get there, and he gets mad at me because I haven't mapped out the fucking Walmart once we get there. And I'm like, bro, um, I'm not. I, I use a map fucking 24-7 doing DoorDash, and it drives me nuts. It's, mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel, I feel, it, drives, it fucking annoys me. But so I'm not. But they, these fucking kids, my daughter, she does the same thing. They all, they, they use that map to go everywhere. They can't go to the fucking movies without a map. You haven't been there before? Yeah, no, it's, it's in your crazy. town. It's in your town where you live. Right. Come on. And this will blow kids' minds. Remember when we has to used to have to remember phone numbers? Oh yeah. Like. Oh yeah. You got to. Yeah. You can hang that. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah I, no, I'm guilty. No. I'm guilty of that now myself. No, I just you know, little... guilty. my dude. I never had to fucking remember shit. I was smart enough to write the shit down. Yeah. God. I mean, I know my I know my mom's number, my daughter's number, my son's number. Like, I know the numbers I need to know, but like most people, I don't. Yeah. Most people, most people, I don't. You just look. Yeah, I'm guilty of that too. But it's because you don't have to. Right. Exactly. I mean, or you don't, have, or you don't have to have a little booklet where you write it down. Like, I mean, I remember back when I first started wrestling, when cell phones were primitive. Mm-hmm. You know, that uh, I had to keep a you know a little book with everybody's number in it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Or even work. So tell me how LCCW went, guys. <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, well, about that, yeah. Would you uh, like to tell did, you, did you guys even have a match? I did. I left kind that of. intermission because I was so pissed off. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He he bolted. We all supposed to tag? No, no. It was a singles. I was supposed to work singles that night. Uh. Uh, so, first off, I think I ate seven years in that nine-hour time span. But, first off, hardly anyone showed up for a fucking setup. So it was left up to fucking me and, like, two, three kids. Which is fucking ridiculous, right? Which we eventually get it done. You know, Dark shows up like right at the tail end, so all the fucking work's done when he shows up. Bastard. Well, <clears throat> sorry. I don't <laughs> I don't sit You're up good. the ring. I'm not supposed to either. I'm supposed to let these fucking kids do it, but you know, ain't nobody else gonna fucking do shit. Mm. Well, and Ricky and Pepper ran to fucking Waldo. Yeah. To get the, Kane's the fucking, fucking autograph. Yeah, ran to fucking Waldo, left me with all the shit. So, you know, I'm sitting there holding my dick in my fucking hand, right? And then shit finally gets done to a point where I can fucking leave because the only thing left is fucking, like, aprons and chairs and shit. You know, little tedious shit. And then me and Dart can proceed to try to find four fucking restaurants, three of them which are goddamn closed. So, you know, fuck us. We don't want food that day. So I'm already in a pissy fucking mood. I get back to the venue, find out, Ricky has changed the fucking card, changed the fucking finishes without running shit by me. So I'm having to fucking delegate that shit. So you're the booker, right? Yeah, I'm the booker. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you feel my pain. <laughs> yeah. No. No, I don't. Because, no. well, Tom knows. Tom knows. <laughs> I would say, hey, 
fuck you. Go sit over there. I mean, I don't give a fuck who it is. I'm the booker, you, you know. Do you get yeah, paid well, to be the booker? Do you get paid to be the booker? Yes. You do? Okay. Yeah. Well, when you get paid to be the booker, that means that's your job. Okay. Um, exactly. You know, and I the thing is, the thing is, you can, al- you can always say, I mean, a promoter can always say, fuck you and do what they want, obviously. It's their promotion, you know. But, yep. um, which, that's when you go, well, which one of you guys, which one of these guys do you think is going to stay here and work your show if I leave? Let's have that conversation. That's, that's part of having, having control of your book. Um, well, we, we kind of did have that conversation because I looked at him and said, you realize, A, yeah. you're trying to put yourself over to be the heavyweight champion, which rule number one, promoters don't put belts on themselves. It's the worst fucking thing in the world. Of course. And I'm sure he's done it before. He's tried. Yeah. Hmm. Never yeah. the heavyweight title. Right. So, I'm sure he won't mind me fucking name dropping him because I do it almost on a weekly basis at this point. Fucking Rip shows up after the Waldo show. Ari fucking, like, tired and aggravated. Bro. And he pulls me aside. Is there something I need to fucking know? I was like, are you talking about with fucking Ricky? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, here's what he wants to fucking do. And he says it makes no sense. I said, I agree. I had a conversation with him. Because I've been waiting on you to get here so we can all sit down and talk. So I'm not just going to, you know, call you while you're fucking two hours away. Hey, this is happening. That way you got to fucking think about this while you're fucking working with somebody else. Yeah. So we, we pull him to the side. Ricky feels like he's being fucking attacked because everybody's telling him, you know, this is the wrong fucking move. He pulls me to the fucking side, which where we went that, to that closed door shit. And I basically told him, you're making the biggest fucking mistake of your life. Because if you piss off Rip... You're going to piss off Kai. It's going to piss off me. It's damn sure going to piss off Dark. And half your fucking show is going to walk out. The best thing for you to do is if you want to work, because your fucking knee's destroyed and you can blow up in like three seconds because you haven't been in the ring in two fucking months, is go work a five, ten minute match, keep it fucking basic, don't run, and let him hit you with a fucking finish and let it be. And he kept wanting to fucking fight this shit. I said, okay, this is how it's going to be. You either... A, call this fucking match off and I find somebody else for rip. Or B, you go out there, you suck it up, you be a fucking man, you lay down, and you let the fucking heavyweight champion, who you've been building up to be the most badass fucking heel on the roster, beat you clean. Or I'm going to fuck home. So, he eventually agreed to that shit. Got everything set up. Then found out he wanted fucking Andrew to fucking lose the belt, which I already had booked for fucking months that he's going to win the belt and carry it over. Uh, apparently, he already went to Andrew and talked to him about it, so Andrew was cool, so I was like, fuck it, you know what? I've already stressed enough about this. Let's just get this shit done. And then, what was it? What was, what was, the, what was the real big fucking issue? The thing that broke my back and I want to give y'all a little background on <clears throat> the Cowboy Kid, Andrew Mitchell. You've heard me talk about him before. He physically trained me. He's one, he started training at 14 years old. He's a goddamn prodigy. He's 18 now. He can wrestle circles around anyone on that roster. Yep. I brought him in because I know how good he is. I sent his footage to Draven immediately he was like this kid's badass we're gonna bring him in he came in first show we did a tag match me and Draven versus him and uh, Wendell Foxman <coughs> and we went over but protected Andrew he didn't take the pinfall he didn't take any finishers he uh, attacked Draven after the match held his belt up I mean it was done really well and then we get to the show yesterday, and he's like, this rookie is going to win this belt because he's done more shows for LCCW than Andrew did. Like, the dumbest fucking reason ever. Are and you talking then, about that one fucking kid? Mm-hmm. The kid that showed up to my show with a belt over his shoulder, oh, Jesus Christ. There you go. Indeed. Yeah. Same kid. Now, I have to admit, he has matured a little bit. He's not, he wasn't nearly as prickish. He 
you know, he had some tragedy in his family, which kind of humbled him. Um, he's got one of the worst jobs I can even imagine. And mm -hmm. I don't, uh, basically, and I don't know how he does it. it. It's crazy. He goes and he picks up dead bodies at accidents and takes them to the morgue. Like his whole job is with dead bodies. And I think that has kind of made him mature. So I'm not angry at him. I'm pissed off at Ricky. I'm saddened for Andrew because this was going to be his first title run ever. Yep. Um, and then, let me tell you what these motherfuckers did. Well, hold on before you get to that part. So intermission, you left, right? And you know, I got that text message about I had a family issue. Mm -hmm. Well, after you left, I got a phone call about the same fucking issue. It got 10 times worse and I needed to leave like ASAP. But I was so close to my match. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do my match and I'm on a bolt, right? As I'm telling them this, they are going to tell everybody, spoiler, that they're shutting the company down after the show. And they wanted somebody else to do it and who's somebody else this guy to fucking tell everybody he's like I can't fucking do that I have a family member who has been hospitalized who I don't even know will make it through the fucking night at this point I'm leaving right so we go out there we do the match it, it, it was what it was considering you know I'm still trying to watch my neck right now so I get back there, I'm trying to fucking get cleaned up enough for me to leave because motherfuckers tag me with paint, right? And as I'm walking out the door, I notice that they got Christy to fucking go and make the announcement. Christy, so Martin, after, you know. yeah, Lilith. is this when the show is over? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is after the show. Okay, like, like immediately after the show, before tear down, before anything. Right. I'm getting dressed. I'm getting the fuck out of there. How many, I need people are, how many people are in the crowd? Oh, shit. Beginning of the show? What what do you think? We had about 65? I'm talking about the end of the show. End of the show, we probably had about 40. Okay. And let me tell yeah, you why. Yeah, go ahead and give that a little bit. Because LCCW does no promotion, period. Um, right. And they expect people to show up. What happened was the church was having an Easter egg hunt. So they're all huddled up in the church common room. So Christy talked <clears throat> LCCW into offering $5 for adults and free kids. Mm -hmm. So that's why we had as many people as we did, because they were already there and it was right. free. Right. And we had some <clears throat> of our talent put in some money to let uh, a couple families in for free too, so don't forget that part. Mm. So as I'm leaving, Christy tells everybody. The whole room just feels like, you know, they've been punched in the gut. Nope, nobody wants to fucking be there. Nobody cares. And it, it, was, it was just a really, really sad experience considering what happened Saturday night should have happened months ago. When we did the November show and I took over the promoting for that shit, we packed that fucking house out. We had at least 60, 70 people there, fully paid. Ricky wanted to take over the promotion for December. Seven people showed up to that show. It, it, I, I don't, and don't get me wrong, as a person, I love Ricky to death. I love Pepper to death, I really do. But from a business standpoint, I don't understand their thought process on how you're going to get your company over when you do zero promoting. You know what I mean? Like, and when you do promote, you're promoting Ricky. You're not promoting the company. I mean, I mean, I, I'm I'm I'm, I, I'm not I'm not, I'm not going to speak on this. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm just going to say this. I'm friends with, with the booker before me. And I didn't agree a lot. Who is that? Who is that? 
uh, El Nino. Oh, yeah. Javier Nino. Yeah. yeah so he, he had the book before I did. And I saw how he was booking his group at the time. Because I, I came in on the tail end of it. And I didn't necessarily agree with it. But after like four months of it, I'm like, I messaged him like, I now understand why you did what you did. And he said, just just do the same thing I did to try to get yourself over so when you finally leave that place, you could actually go somewhere else. It's, It was a clusterfuck. It really was. And let's not even get in on the all the limitations of trying to book somebody. You can't book this person because they cost too much. I, you can't book this person because Ricky has a problem. You can't book this person because they did us wrong fucking two years ago. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. If, if I can sit there in the same room with the man that broke my neck six months after it happened, have a conversation with him and, you know, be civil, why can't you do the same? Yeah. Brother, there's levels to this shit, okay? Um, Tom saw the way that I do things seamlessly. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I don't like I don't have I'm not I don't negotiate I don't I'm the fucking boss, you know. I give my guys a lot of freedom as far as like the way that they call their matches. I, I'm not real big on on agenting and all that shit with guys because most of the guys I book I book for I pay well enough to where I don't need to babysit them, you know. Well, I am criticized for that at times. Again, Dick offered suck if you want. Um. <laughs> that be, I, I want to make I want to make a T-shirt that says that Dick offered suck if you want. Put that um, on hillside.com. Like Please. I don't, like I don't. You couldn't possibly imagine how little I give a fuck about what people outside that don't know what I, how the way I do things think I do things because generally they're not even in the ballpark. I have had many people that I did not necessarily get along with come in and work for me that when they left. They were like they were they 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 were man they're like man I had a totally different view of, of you than when you know than when I got here. Um, right. I, the one thing I don't fuck around about is um, be there, uh, be there on time. Yep. And don't give me any shit about finishes. It's fucking work. Um, it's fake, motherfuckers. You know, uh, you shouldn't be able to beat that guy that's six four and two eighty five when you're five nine and one sixty. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm not. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not gonna. I don't. I don't. I use common sense. I expect the people that work for me to use common sense. Um, and I want everybody to have fun and be safe. And you know, and 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 at the end of the day, man, it's just wrestling. I mean, we're not. You know, we're not launching bottle rockets out of our ass at a specific target. You know, we're right. doing. It's just wrestling. We're gonna do it again next month. Or the month after, or whenever, you know, we're gonna keep, you know, it's, um, we may have a month where <coughs> the storyline seem to go stale. We'll do something about it next month, but get through this month. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna change it all at the show. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna change it. We're six matches into the card, or four matches into the card with two left. I'm not gonna change the main event into some into some something so drastic that you think it'll save that show when I can, you know. When I was with Tom, we didn't have any shows like that. But right. when I was at Knockout, when I was with Nick with Knockout, some of the talent that I had to use when I first started booking for him made it difficult for me to. Uh, and it was his. It was his guys. It was his people. You know, like I had one guy that came to me and said, "Wait, you're great. You're the booker. That's awesome. Love you, brother. Now I need fifty dollars to, to work here." He wasn't a fifty dollar guy. Right. He wasn't a fifty dollar guy. I quit booking him. Now he hates me. Fucks given zero. Yeah. Fucks <laughs> given zero. Not not one fuck do I give. But he priced himself out. Another. He was like a mainstay at Kidfest. Kidfest. <laughs> Kidfest is traditionally a knockout show. Mm-hmm. He pissed off at me because I didn't book him at Kidfest. Why the fuck? You know because I when I have when I have guys like Cam Stewart. And Andy Mack and Blake Banks and Devin Diaz and top tier 
young five year to seven year in talent. The best, the best of that particular group. Mm-hmm. When I have the best of them, why am I going to have a fifty some fifty something year old shit show guy coming to work for the same money when they're willing? They're they just want to work and they're willing to go to Waldo from Orlando to do it. And when right. I, I don't know, man. I, I just I don't I just um you know and I love this particular person to death, like dearly. Like we've been friends for years. But man, that's one thing about being a booker, man. Your fucking friend, your some of your old friends, they expect you to hook them up, and you can't. You have to. You got to do what's best for the show. And see, oh, yeah. when you're dealing when you're dealing with, with a with a very limited budget show, and I've done it, I've done it two different times. Um, not maybe not as limited as your budget, but pretty damn limited. Um, you just you just do the best you can, you know, and. You do the best you can. You you appreciate the guys that are pretty pretty de- decent that can actually work, yep. coming out and doing it for next to nothing, you know. And and the people that are consistent, you appreciate that. But you know, my problem my problem is with those kind of shows is you always have the guy that comes in that tells you who he was trained by, and it takes you a couple matches to realize he's full of shit, you know. And then you feel, and then you feel bad because you put him in the ring with a friend of yours, not knowing one hundred percent if the kid was even trained right, you know. Right. And uh, that's t- that's it's usually easy for me to navigate because back before I retired, I would just get in the ring with him and make him do a five minute match with me. And if you could hang with me, you're good. Right. You know, and a lot of them good. A lot of them. Like at MFW, they get in the ring with me, and I beat the brakes off their ass for five minutes. And then, and you know, and then you know, start, you, you know, oh, I was trained by, I went to two point oh. Well, I'm not going to call Alex Porto on Saturday night at six o'clock and ask him if he trained this kid. Right. You know what I mean? But I know Alex Porto trained yours truly, so I know when I get in there, if I start throwing bones at him and he's freaking out, he was not trained by Alex Porto. He might have went to the school. He mm-hmm. might went to the school a couple times. But he wasn't trained by Alex Portel. Right. You know, and, and then and then you, you tell him, hey man, come back when you get some more experience. I I have I have graduated to doing to booking, you know, shows where I have and I, and and frankly I've from doing a lot of shows that I've done with Crazy Bastards and even with when I was doing commentary before that, um I've gotten to know people, you know, a lot more. Um a lot of the newer kids. I am good friends with just about every one of the schools. Um you know, I'm friendly. I'm friendly enough with them to where I get. I have a, a better pick of talent. Your problem, brother, is location. <laughs> Your problem is you guys' problem is you're not going to get the Orlando guys to come up there for what for what their normal rate is because it's so damn far. You're preaching to the choir. Trust you me. Know, I already... You know, um, it's like Tom. You know, I could bring crazy bastards up there for a normal rate. You know. But who are we gonna work? You know. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but <clears throat> then what? Yeah, no, absolutely, and that's why no? I I never want to get involved with LCCW. I'm not gonna save that for a gentleman. So, yeah, but the yeah. thing the thing is, like, I believe in doing favors, especially for for someone like Tom, who's done a ton of favors for me. Right. I believe in doing favors. I come up there for free. You know, I, I, I would, and I'd probably get strange too. I mean, we, I could probably get us all too, but uh, then what? You know, does it doesn't? We come up there. First of all, if we came up there and we took the, and we and we lost to you, where do we go from there? If we come up there and we beat you, where do we go from there? So we'd have to literally come up there once, have you guys jump us. We'd have to do it right, and to do it right is expensive. Yep. You know, to do it right when they're right down the street is expensive. Mm-hmm. You know, if you think about it. So, and if you're and if you're if your promoter's not even promoting and you're only drawing, you know, a handful of people, it's no, it doesn't really matter right. who you bring. You could bring you could bring Jesus Christ up there, because I I remember Luke Curtis and Layla Gray used to work for that promotion. Mm-hmm. Not even a year ago. Wow. Layla Gray's on TV now. Mm-hmm. You know, Nick and you. 
I remember I remember one time. And I love Nick Kinyonis to death, I do. I love Nick Kinyonis. He's a vet. He's funny. He's funny because he called me one day and he's like, Hey man. And I don't remember who it was, but he he doesn't he didn't really know the booker protocol. Like you can't call another booker and ask him what they pay somebody. <laughs> and he did. He called me and he's like it's like, Oh man, how much can you get this girl for? I said, Well, uh, I don't even know what to say to you right now. He's like, he's like, he's like, what? I said, Nick, man, if you were anybody else, I'd be cussing you out right now. But since I, you know, since you're a homie, uh, you can't ask that, bro. That's not cool. Please tell me I'm the first person you called. He said, yeah. And I said, bro, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. That's really that's bad business. You know, <laughs> you'll call the bookers and ask them what they pay for you. You know, now me and Kagus, one of my best friends in the business, have we do we? discuss things like that yeah on the cuff but you know what I mean not not on fucking Facebook messenger right like words, you know what I mean so uh yeah um there's the good old boy there's the old there's the old like the the it's, like I said man there's levels to this shit you know you being where you are trying to run up there is tough man because I mean, USWA's been doing it for fucking 25 years and they still only draw they still only draw 150 200 and it's always the same 150 200 right so you know like this bold city you guys aren't going to walk into a show where there's 500 people I don't give a fuck I don't care who's on it it's not going to happen it doesn't happen in Jacksonville Jacksonville is weird that way <laughs> shit yep. man when Pope does his show that fucking uh, that show he does, the charity show he does, it a live something that I can't remember. Yeah, Good show. It's a great show. Best indie talent in Florida every year, by far. They don't draw shit because it's Jacksonville, you know. And Jacksonville people that like if the if the fucking Jaguars are great, they'll fill that stadium. If the Jaguars are a five hundred team, you can, you can call a Jack, you can call the Jaguars and tell them what time you want them to start. There ain't nobody there. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's sad. it sucks. It's just Orlando used to be that way, but the soccer thing really—that's I tell you what, man. Me and my dad were just talking about this the other day. I don't know what it is, but if you get a good fucking soccer team in your town, they will start watching your basketball team. They'll start watching your hockey team. All that shit. Hmm. It just seems like it always starts with soccer. And he's right. He's right because that's exactly what happened in Orlando. The magic can suck, and they still draw ten out of fifteen thousand for the mm -hmm. building, which is not, which is way better than a lot of other NBA teams. Oh sure. And the magic know how to suck; like they are, they've got sucking down to a science. <laughs> Finishing below five hundred is like right in their fucking wheelhouse. And you know they keep, oh, we're going to draft the number one pick, and they draft the number one pick, and he sucks. And he, and he sucks, and he sucks. There's only been one Shaq, man. After that, it was over. And Dwight Howard. After mm -hmm. that, it's over, man. They've mastered that. Yeah. Hey, let's, we'll ride right in here. We'll stay right in here. At just below suck. <laughs> or completely suck. Uh, just above completely suck. But suck. Still, enough suck. And they, But the fucking soccer team, the soccer team, it doesn't matter if the motherfuckers win or lose. They pack that place every single... Because they figured it out. They have baseline tickets. They have mid-range tickets. And they have... You know, um, top tier tickets, and there's a vast difference between them. So you got your lower middle class family that can go with all six of their kids and watch the game, and it doesn't kill them. Right. And, you know, it just depends on where you want to sit, and and even in, the, in that stadium, the way it's set up, the nosebleeds are still thirty feet away from the fucking field because it's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 a it's a good experience. I'm I'm not a big soccer guy, but I've been to a couple games and. It, shit, it's fun, man. It was kind of like arena football was. You know, everybody's partying and it's, you know, raising hell and everybody's shit faced. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, it's a blast. Yeah, so, um, first of all, before the end of the week, check out heelshitshop.com for the new Thump Decree Dick Offered Suck It If You Want To t shirt. <laughs> um, that's definitely <laughs> coming out. <clears throat> Um, Dick offered, feel free to suck. Feel free to suck. <laughs> yeah. Write that shit down. Uh, yeah. Feel free to suck. 
Um, <laughs> exactly. Um, second of all, back to the, the show this weekend, <clears throat> the thing that really upset me, and I can understand why it upset him so much, because after, after everything, it was like, almost like he was being attacked somehow. But just like every show, you set up a merch table. He had his family work on the merch table. Oh, shit, I forgot about that. And then... Oh, yeah, you told me about this. Yeah, and then about... Before his match, well before... I mean, early in the show, she kicked him out. For no fucking reason. She kicked his family <laughs> out. They were sitting behind the table selling merch. And Just they, before, after, before after he wrestled? Before. Before. So they were concerned that they were going to make more money on merch than they made at the gate. That's horrifying. I don't fucking know, but they tried to go apologize to him, and Andrew's, dad, Andrew's parents don't fuck around. So they're like, I'll come back in when Andrew wrestles, but fuck the rest of this bullshit. And I don't blame them. And the, and yeah. the look on Andrew's face when he came and told me that they kicked his parents out, his family out, you could tell he they felt they were in. targeting him. And they paid to get in. They I don't paid know. to get in? I don't know. No, they probably uh, typically, did. Typically, I don't, I don't force, like, immediate family to pay. Now, now, if they did pay, it was done behind my back without my knowing. But usually, if you bring your mom or your dad or, or your kids or some shit like that. No. Fuck that. No, they can come in. Fuck that. That's who you want to pay. That's called supporting your fucking, you know. I, I don't know. Like I said, man, it's different. It's different for me because I'm, I've got to I've got to cover Tom's twelve hundred dollar payroll. So I can't I can't look at it that way. You know. Yeah. Now, have we let have have me and Tom let people in? I'm sure. Yeah. But that's left that's left up to him. But I don't give my guys any impression they're just going to bring their whole fucking family in because shit. We we that'd be half our fucking crowd. I, I can't have you can't you can't have that. You know. Yeah, I'm sure there's something else involved. El Ray used El Ray used to do it. You know. Oh, that's a whole hour long story. Yeah, we'll Talk get into that today. next week, I think. But, yeah, just people don't know how to run a business, man. And if you've let them in, and all they're doing is sitting behind a table selling merch, who fucking... Why would you even consider kicking them out? I agree totally. I agree totally. Whether they paid to get in or not. Right. I, you don't kick them out. Once, if you let them in, you don't kick them out. For no... Mm -hmm. I mean, shit, selling merch does nothing but promote your show. You know? I mean, yeah, granted, it promotes the guy, <clears throat> but I just can't imagine. You're paying... I mean, we're okay, guys, we're talking about a guy, and this is no bullshit. This is a shoot. A straight shoot. And, uh, this is probably the last thing we'll have time for. LCCW was bought for $40,000, and all mm -hmm. the motherfucker got was a name. No ring, no lights, all that other shit he got afterwards. No, I know. So, you can't expect the guy's fucking... And I mean, I, you know, I'm not trying to make fun of a guy with autism. I, I, I'm not. But my God. <clears throat> How does a guy with 40 grand not have a fucking lawyer? To read the shit, you know. And, and the other party has told me countless times... Man, I told him, have your attorney look at this, have your attorney look at this, have your attorney look at this. And he didn't. And he got nothing but a name. And the name wasn't shit. That It was a shit show before. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? So, I don't know, man. You know, uh, honestly, people like that, we we don't need in the business. Not running shows. No. Not, unless, not unless they surrender to the fact that they don't know what the fuck they're doing and they, have, and they let somebody else do it and by letting somebody else do it it's someone like you or or you know even Tom I mean Tom knows enough just from watching me how to do it it's not it ain't rocket science mm -hmm. right you know. um, trust me. Well, I mean honestly Draven if you could, if you hung around with me with one sh for one show you would learn everything that I've learned from every booker that I've ever worked for and me 
in two shows. It's it's not like it's not a curriculum. It's just there's little things that I do to make things easier for me. Right. Like there's little things I do in advance. There's little things I do right when I walk in the door. There's little things I do I cover during the meeting. You know, there's there's and I, it's consistent. And then the rest of the time I can just smoke pot in the parking lot. <laughs> you know? I mean, seriously, you can get you can make it you can get yourself to where it's fairly elementary. The guys I see you use and especially like in your case too, because you use fundamentally the same people, it looks like just from the flyers I've seen, it's basically most of your guys are the same people every month. Yeah. And with, with a few exceptions. So you get them fucking in the routine. You know, you get them in the routine of things, and no matter what scale the show is on, you can you can get them to do what you want because and and they like it too because they you, you take that you shake that fucking that weirdo pressure off that doesn't really exist anyway, but everybody puts it on them because they think they have to perform at a certain level. Well, yeah, yep. I expect my guys to perform at a certain level or I wouldn't book them. You know, but I don't say it to them. I don't say it to them. Well, it, it wasn't ever the talent that I had really an issue with besides one or two, which we got rid of them early on. It's always been the promoter. The yeah. promoter always trying to change shit after I've had it set in stone for weeks, if not months. Yeah. Like, I had storylines from November all the way to October of this year that you know I pretty much had every show wrote out from yeah. then to now I mean and I've seen I'm, I'm going to be honest Tom knows how I am about the ring work I'm very critical of the ring work from the way, ring work I saw at LCCW there was a lot of um, a lot of fundamentals a lot of fundamental stuff that was missing on, on your mm -hmm. On your some of your your newer younger guys, and that's to be expected. Don't get me wrong. With those kind of guys, when you get when you're when you're on a low budget show and you have young guys, like me personally, from my experience, when I what I used to do is, I would actually spend a lot of time with them when it came time to call their matches and like make you know make sure they weren't doing fucking suplexes in the shine and you know shit like that. You know, no finishers in the shine. Um, you know, shit like that, uh, and, and 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 have them. The best thing you can do is get them to to apply simple match structure when they're new, and get them in the spirit of even the tag teams. You get them in the spirit of of understanding the elements and you know the shine, you know the shine, the heat, the comeback, the finish. You get them in that. Unfortunately, you know, you we're going to have to cut this okay. off until next week. Um, thank you for joining us for Talking Shit. We will see you next time. Vodka is Castell. Indulge in the Red Revolution.